The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute has today decided to award the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine 2012 jointly to John B. Gurdon and Shinya Yamanaka for the discovery that mature cells can be reprogrammed to become pluripotent. Die Nobelversammlung am Karolinska Institutet hat heute beschlossen, den Nobelpreis für Physiologie oder Medizin des Jahres 2012 gemeinsam an John B. Gurdon und Shinya Yamanaka für ihre Entdeckung der Umprogrammierung reifer Zellen in Pluripotenz zu verleihen. L'Assemblée Nobel de l'Institut Karolinska a décidé ce jour d'attribuer le prix Nobel de physiologie ou de médecine 2012 conjointement à John B. Gordon et Shinya Yamanaka pour la découverte de la possibilité de reprogrammation de cellules adultes en cellules pluripotentes. Nobelevski Assemblée pri Karolinskom Institute Regila Zevonia Prisudic, Nobelevski Premio pour Physiologie et la Médecine, Ravno John B. Gordon i Shinya Yamanaka za odkrytje prije programirovanja srelih klijetok i pluripotentnije. Thank you. And with that, I would like to ask Professor Thomas Perlman uh, of the Nobel Committee to present the science behind the prize. Good morning. This year's Nobel Prize uh, awards the discovery that has changed the way we understand how cells in the body become specialized. And it has provided entirely new tools for effective development of drugs and new therapies. On this first picture, we see a fertilized egg that develops first into an embryo and then in, into an adult human with all its specialized cells, such as muscles, nerves, and skin. As we all know, this process always moves in the same direction, from immature cells in the embryo uh, to specialized cells in the adult. A common metaphor for this process visualizes how cells move downhill in a landscape to finally reach their uh, destinations as specialized mature cells at the bottom of deep valleys. Scientists believed for a long time that our genes are likely altered in this process in ways so that this journey could never uh, be set in reverse. And it seemed impossible for mature cells to travel back all the way to the immature state at the top of the mountain. Now, John Gurdon changed this view by a groundbreaking experiment in frog cells. He thought that if genes, contrary to the common view, were intact in mature cells, its nucleus should be able to develop when moved into the cellular context of an egg. So he destroyed um, the nucleus of an egg uh, and used a fine pipette to transfer uh, and replace it with the nucleus from a mature intestinal cell from a tadpole. In most cases, um, this modified egg uh, could not develop. But in a few cases, it developed into normal swimming tadpoles and later adult frogs. At first, many were skeptical and surprised about this result. But this paradigm-shifting discovery was confirmed. And we now know that the same experiment works to clone mammals, the first being Dolly the sheep, but later also mice, cows, pigs, and other animals. Gordon had shown that the nucleus of a mature cell retains all genetic information that is required to generate an animal. But could this also be done in intact cells without dissecting out the cell nucleus and using a pipette that, like Gordon did and placing it in an egg? Shinya Yamanaka, over 40 years later, made the discovery that also whole intact mature cells can be reprogrammed and that this could be achieved by a surprisingly simple procedure. 
Now, Yamanaka, he studied genes that are important for the function of pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells are found in the early embryo and can develop into all different types of mature cells in the body. And he thought that some stem cell genes may induce pluripotency if they would be transferred into mature cells in a mouse. 24 candidate stem cell genes were selected. His target cell was a skin cell from a mouse. Now, usually scientists transfer genes into other cells one by one, but in a strikingly bold experiment, all of these 24 genes were introduced in one single step into the skin cells. And a few cells became reprogrammed into cells that could generate um, all the mature cells in, in, in a mouse. They had now become pluripotent. Further experiments demonstrated that only four genes were needed for this induction of pluripotency. He named these cells induced pluripotent stem cells or iPS cells. The iPS cell technique is a truly groundbreaking discovery that has opened up a whole new research area in cell biology and medicine. For example, iPS cells can now be generated from patients with disease. And from these iPS cells, mature cells can be cultured so that we now have a procedure that gives access to new cell models for disorders that previously have been very difficult to study. This is a final picture that summarizes the fundamental discovery made by this year's laureates and illustrates how John Gurdon and Shinya Yamanaka reinstated pluripotency by either nuclear transfer in 1962 or by gene transfer in 2006. Thanks to these two scientists, we now know that development is not strictly a one-way street. Here, finally, we have the two laureates. To the left, John Gurdon uh, from Great Britain, uh, who is a professor at the University of Cambridge and the Gurdon Institute. To the right, Shinya Yamanaka, born in Japan and a professor at Kyoto University. Thank you. <laughs>